Hello Funkers, Tony Funk here, back at it again with yet another video for you guys. In this episode, we'll discuss the most tantalizing question that we were left with at the end of the Granola Saga. So just how strong is Black Frieza? And believe me, this question is actually a lot more difficult to answer. No matter which way you slice it, you must understand that trying to figure out how powerful characters are relative to other characters in Dragon Ball is a combination of mathematics, intuition, interpretation, use of precedence, bias, and a little bit of magic. And fortunately for y'all, I decided to take up the impossible task of power scaling Frieza and giving us a good idea of how powerful Frieza will be in the next arc. Before I begin, however, let me break down what I mean by power scaling. Since we have not canonically had power level since Daizenshu 7, we have to resort to other ways to figure out how powerful Frieza will be, especially in Dragon Ball Super, where he goes toe to toe with Super Saiyan Blue, and later in the series where he KOs Vegeta and Goku with one punch. Okay, but now that I mentioned Daizenshu 7, I may as well reveal how ridiculously high the last canon power level was. For Goku's full power during his Super Saiyan fight against Frieza, we're talking about a power level of 150 million. That's ridiculous. Frieza, on the other hand, clocked in at 120 million, also according to Daizenshu 7. Okay, so clearly these numbers are so big they've lost all meaning. But what we can infer is that full power Frieza is 80% as powerful as full power Goku in the end of the Frieza saga. So why is this tidbit of information important? Well this is where power scaling comes in. Though the Frieza saga was a long time ago, we have an insight as to what the bare minimum power level difference would have been like between a fighter who is completely outclassed, in this case Frieza, and a fighter who is becoming increasingly bored with a far inferior opponent, in this case Goku. So so, we can chalk up the minimum power differential that it takes to overpower an opponent. And well, we have a start. Okay, having broken that down, we can now proceed to scale upwards throughout the years. Okay, so here we have our next step in our journey to power scale Frieza, the Resurrection F arc. We're going to skip future Trunks encounter with Frieza as A, it does not give us a useful power scaling scenario, and B, the scenario at hand isn't trustworthy because future Trunks is much more expedient with offing villains as opposed to Goku, meaning future Trunks could probably be maybe 5% stronger than an opponent and he'll still kill them within like two minutes, you know? But okay, back to Resurrection F. Since our original example was between Goku and Frieza, this next one is going to be quite easy. In the Goku vs Frieza rematch, we can see that final form Frieza and base form Goku are evenly matched or at least close enough in power level. Although I will say that based on the way Frieza kept trying to defeat Goku using dirty tactics, that Goku must have been slightly more powerful in his base form. Now once Goku and Frieza powered up, the dynamics seem to stay relatively the same, with Frieza barely being able to keep up with Goku until his stamina depleted and Frieza had to rely on Sorbet's ring laser. Okay, now considering how the fight went when both Goku and Frieza went full power, we can assume that Frieza was weaker than Goku but not completely outclassed until his stamina issues appeared. Based on Goku's commentary during the peak of their battle, we can assume that Goku was trying during their battle but wasn't too worried. Now prepare yourselves for a little bit of guesstimation, which is going to happen a lot here. I am going to make the assumption that instead of a 20% difference in power, Goku is only 15% stronger than Frieza. We must now calculate the difference in power between Frieza Saga Goku and Resurrection F Goku in order to see how powerful Frieza can get within 4 months of training, which will be key to figuring out how powerful Black Frieza is. Why? Because it gives us a good idea of calculating Frieza's improvement rate. So how much more powerful was Resurrection F Goku than Dragon Ball Z Frieza Saga Goku? In order to figure that out, we must go saga through saga painstakingly to scale Goku's power. Again, power scaling is all about comparing ratios that are comparable to other ratios. The closest character we can power scale to Goku at the end of the Frieza saga is Mecha Frieza. Mecha Frieza came back to Earth with the sole purpose of seeking revenge from Goku. Since Mecha Frieza is stated to be stronger than Final Form Frieza, we know that Frieza wasn't about to go to Earth just to be killed again. 
Ultimate, which implies to me that Mecha Frieza was confident he could defeat Goku after a year of training. Considering the fact that Frieza does not know what an individual's improvement rate is in training, since, I mean, he had never trained up until that point in his life, we can assume that Frieza thought he was at least maybe, I don't know, 20% stronger than Goku after one year of training? Here's the one unsubstantiated claim I'll make here though. I don't believe Frieza thought Goku would improve much. So little, in fact, that I'm claiming Frieza believed Goku's improvement would be negligible, which is why I believe Mecha Frieza was 25% stronger than Namek Saga Goku, assuming Frieza would only anticipate a 5% increase in power. So if Mecha Frieza is 25% stronger than Super Saiyan Goku in the Namek Saga, how strong is Goku in the beginning of the Android Saga? Well, considering Goku clapped both King Cold and Mecha Frieza, I could only assume that Goku reached the outclassing ratio, which we established to be a 20% minimum difference. But again, we'll use the most conservative figures and say Goku was at the lowest threshold and was only 20% stronger than Mecha Frieza. This makes Android Saga level Goku 50% stronger than Namek Goku, at least. Frieza's shocking death at the hands of a warrior weaker than Goku taught him about the importance of training, which bled into Frieza's subsequent return and subsequent underestimation. Having stated this, we know that Frieza has underestimated his opponents at least twice by this point, and is a lot more likely to ensure that it does not happen again, hence the 10 years of training. So the next thing we have to look at is to compare analogs to Goku in ascending fashion. Because of this, we have to compare Goku with Android 17 and 18, since they are the only characters who are stronger than Goku at the time. Of course, Android 16 as well. Before we compare Goku and the androids, we must calculate how much stronger Goku got during the three-year time skip as well. If we can assume that Goku got 50% stronger after his stay in Yardrat for a year, not taking into account the power of instant transmission and the powers of new techniques, it shouldn't be too much of a stretch to believe that Goku got 50% more powerful per year. Though Goku had a master on Yardrat, Goku probably learned shortcuts and techniques during his his stay more than learning how to increase his power level, considering the fact that yard rats are universally recognized for having low power levels but having interesting techniques that make up for them. So it shouldn't be too sensationalist to claim that Goku is able to increase his power level by 50% each year without a master. In total, Goku achieved a 337.5 increase in power over these three years of training that led up to Android 19 and 20's first appearance. Since Goku doesn't actually fight 18 or 17, we have a similar analog to him, which we will use as a measuring stick. Thanks to Vegeta 19's fight, we have a canonical clue that states that Vegeta's power level could be comparable to Goku's at that point in time, which leads us to the assumption that during Vegeta and Android 18's fight, Vegeta was 337.5% more powerful than Goku was when he first returns from Yardrat. And well, if we can power scale the Prince of All Saiyans, we can in power scale 18 and 17. Based on how little of a chance Vegeta stood against 18, I think it would be safe to say that Vegeta was being overpowered, which we established from Daisenshu 7 to be around a 20% difference, meaning 18 and 17 are approximately 405% as powerful as, as Yard Rat Goku, or 4.05 times stronger than him. Before we go back to rescale Goku, we have to apply the law of 20% to see where Imperfect Cell would land on the power scale during his fight with Piccolo in 17. Again, I'm using 20% as the standard power differential between opponents who are capable of inflicting damage against each other, but where one fighter is completely overpowering the other. Which is why I'm making the claim that Piccolo in 17 were most likely 20% weaker than this new and improved Imperfect Cell. But by now, y'all probably already understand my methodology in scaling opponents, so I'm going to continue down the list of progressive ratios and hopefully everyone can understand how I got to these conclusions. Alright, so semi-perfect cell is three times as powerful as imperfect cell. Why? Because a two times increase doesn't make sense. Cell is meant to need the components in the androids to become perfect, which means that the power would have to be greater than the sum of its parts in order for the absorption to make sense. Otherwise, cell would just try to incapacitate and absorb members of the dragon team. Because of this, semi-perfect cell has to be in the ballpark of three times the power of imperfect 
excel. Now let's look at Vegeta when he comes out of the chamber. Prior to going in, he probably was in the ballpark power level as Goku. So when Vegeta goes into the chamber for one year, it's safe to assume that he can increase his power level at the same rate that we assumed Goku did during the three year time skip, which was a 50% increase per year. But Vegeta not only increased his base power level, but improved his Super Saiyan transformation, which most likely doubled his power output while having a marginal if not non-existent speed increase. But I want to make this claim to be as realistic as possible. The time chamber's properties appear to expedite the rate of training due to the harsh conditions fighters are exposed to, like the gravity and other conditions which make it harder to fight. Which means that Super Vegeta is 5 times more powerful than Goku was during the Android Saga 3 years after his training. Then I deduce that Super Saiyan Grade 2 is 2.5 times stronger than Super Saiyan. Now I'm gonna stop everyone right now. In power scaling we try to be as realistic and as pragmatic as possible, which means that when we power scale we don't take into consideration things that Toriyama says, you know, where he says, for example, Super Saiyan being 50 times stronger than base form and stuff like that. The reason for that is because realistically, if someone powers up and they become 50 times stronger than their base form, it doesn't matter who their opponent was who was giving them trouble, more often than not, they're gonna sneeze and blow away their opponent, just because 50 times is a ridiculous multiplier to multiply one's power. I mean, twice is enough to defeat an opponent, you know? They can throw a punch twice as hard as you, they're twice as fast as you, their reactions are twice as fast. Really? You think you can win? Now imagine 50 times. Anyway, I deduced that full power Super Saiyan had to be 2.5 times more powerful than Super Saiyan Grade 2, and the reason for that is because Super Saiyan Grade 2 is 2.5 times more powerful than Super Saiyan. I deduced that Perfect Cell before he goes Super Perfect Cell and all of that shit was 103.67% more powerful than Goku. And even though Goku gave up and everything and it looked like Cell was way out of Goku's league and everything, ultimately Goku knew that Cell would have probably defeated Goku if they kept going. A 3% difference, it's a small difference between Cell and Goku, but that difference is still there. And if someone's 3% stronger than you, then the odds are immensely more on that person than they are on you. That's why Goku gave up, because he knew that in order to beat Cell, you had to be considerably stronger than him, and he thought that Gohan had that spark. Then we go into Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, which is 30% stronger than Perfect Cell, then uh, Super Perfect Cell is 20% stronger than Super Saiyan 2 Gohan. I figured because Super Perfect Cell is really fucking scary and way stronger than Gohan, um, and it seemed like he was way overpowering, and he was really not taking the beam struggle seriously because he wanted Gohan to suffer because Gohan made Cell suffer because Cell made Gohan suffer. <laughs> Funny how that works. And subsequently, Majin Buu is 384.61% stronger than Super Perfect Cell only because he is 20% weaker than Super Saiyan 3. So um, that's how that math works out. Anyway, I have explanations for the subsequent items on this list right here. However, they will not be included in this video just because it would be kind of long and kind of boring. So I'm actually thinking about releasing those explanations as monotonous as they may seem in a separate video. I will be skipping up to the part where I explain kind of the god tiers as to why they're so crazy. So when we reach Battle of Gods, both the movie and the anime, I made the assumption that Super Saiyan God was 10 times more powerful than Super Saiyan 3 slash Kid Buu, because I thought Goku and Kid Buu were evenly matched. Golden Frieza, I figured, was 340% stronger than Super Saiyan God, and Super Saiyan Blue was 115% stronger than Golden Frieza. Then, of course, in the Tournament of Power, Goku goes Ultra Instinct Omen. This is one of those really ridiculous power spikes and this is what throws everything off. So I said it increases by 4,000%, which means uh, it is 40 times more powerful than the most powerful version of Super Saiyan Blue at the time. And the reason I say that is because when Goku was fighting Jiren, he was going Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken times 20. And this is the one time that I can't ignore multipliers because it's in the name. It says Goku is 20 times more powerful than he is in Super Saiyan Blue. Based on that, I figured that because Goku was 20 times more powerful than he was than his regular most powerful version
version of blue, then Jiren must be somewhere in the ballpark of like 50 times more powerful than Super Saiyan Blue. So um, that's why I came to the conclusion that Ultra Instinct Omen was ballpark 40 times more powerful than Super Saiyan Blue, which is stupid, but the move is called Kaioken times 20, and uh, Jiren was not breaking a sweat. Then I would say Ultra Instinct by the end of the Moro arc has to be two and a half times more powerful than Ultra Instinct just because of the training with Miris and the fact that Ultra Instinct Goku was able to go toe to toe with Moro who absorbed an angel and had the powers of an angel for a little bit and you know he destabilized because they weren't his own powers he was still wielding an ungodly amount you know no pun intended an ungodly amount of power and yet Ultra Instinct Instinct, Goku was able to keep up and defeat him, albeit because he was falling apart. So Ultra Instinct Goku, by that point in the story, is just on a completely different tier. So I do think two and a half times is pretty reasonable. Now, uh, we get to True Ultra Instinct. Um, how much more powerful is True Ultra Instinct than Ultra Instinct from the end of the Moro arc? I would say three times, for sure. Because Goku was able to use it against Gas, who's the most powerful in the universe, and is two tiers, basically, ahead of Goku, right? So this is someone who's, like, definitely way more powerful than Goku, and Goku used it. So I do think three times is, uh, is a fair, fair assessment to how powerful True Ultra Instinct is. Okay, so let's figure out how powerful Frieza can get in a scale of four months. Frieza's actual power level is 2,408,917,688,542.49 during the Resurrection F arc. Now when I subtract uh, 120 million, which is what Frieza's power level already was at his strongest, I got 2,408,677,688,542.49, which is how much Frieza can gain in four months. So if we're trying to calculate how strong Frieza can get in 10 years, we would multiply that times 30. So I did, and I got 72,260,330,656,000. 7, which is nowhere near the power levels of true ultra instinct even if i assumed that black frieza was like a hundred times multiplier he still wouldn't come close to how powerful gas is even if i assumed that black frieza had a 10 times multiplier it still wouldn't make black frieza much more powerful than true ultra instinct goku because true ultra instinct goku's power level would be 2 quadrillion 142 trillion 391 billion 181 million 213 thousand 844 that's nuts <laughs> so how powerful is black frieza really he's as powerful as fucking toriyama and toyotaro want him to be and I came to the conclusion that True Ultra Instinct had to be that powerful, and based on Frieza's rate, even with some modification of the numbers to help Frieza, he would still come short to the powers of True Ultra Instinct. So really, Black Frieza is as powerful as he needs to be. But I understand you didn't watch this video just for me to say I don't know and Frieza is as strong as he needs to be because I'm going to give you a guess. I believe that just based on what I've seen and based on the power scaling that I can do based on those last chapters of the Granola Saga, I believe that Black Frieza is approximately three times more powerful than Gas was at the end of the Granola Saga. And no, I do not have the hypothetical power level. <laughs> I think that's something y'all are going to have to figure out on your own. But hey, we don't know where the story's going to go. Maybe Black Frieza's next target is Beerus. Maybe it's the Angels. Because it's so ambiguous, since we can't possibly know how powerful Black Frieza is, considering the fact that the math isn't adding up, Frieza could be the biggest threat in all of Dragon Ball ever, you know? It's totally possible. Anyway guys, thanks for tuning in, and I wish everyone well, and as always, I shall see y'alls down the road. Bah, what the hell. I've been such a dick tease unnecessarily. So yes, I am gonna show you Black Freeze's hypothetical power level if he was actually as powerful as he was at the end of the Granola Saga. And just to throw in an extra treat, I will show you guys both Gas and Granola's hypothetical power levels as well. And here they are. All right, Tony out.